Hi everybody, welcome, it's Helping Hands here again, bringing you your 20 second tip of the week, which is going to be on garrisons. So this video is going to be everything to do with garrisons, from how to enter a garrison, what's the best way to clear a, a garrison, uh, and stuff like that. So let's, without further ado, let's get straight on into the game. Okay, there are two types of garrison houses in the game, um, which all comes in different sizes though, however. So there's the wooden garrison house and the stone garrison house, both of which do provide green cover. However, the stone structures are a lot more sturdy and durable than that of wooden ones. Wooden houses can easily be destroyed by just normal grenades, whereas stone houses uh, will take a lot more firepower to get uh, to, to collapse, okay? So here we have a stone house, a very small square stone house, as indicated here. And over here is a rectangular wooden house. And there's a lot of other houses that we'll get into later on. So what, what benefits do you get inside a house, when you, uh, a garrison, when, once you get inside with a unit? Well, first things first, as, as I just mentioned, is the cover. So you get the you get the cover bonus, and this is and you can't get flanked when you're inside a house like this. So let's say these these um, pioneers right here are behind this are behind cover, right? But if um, a squad enemy squad was come around this side or over here and started shooting this pioneer from from the side, it wouldn't be, you know it wouldn't benefit from that cover anymore because it, it's now technically been flanked. However, when you're in a house, you will not get flanked because you're inside the you know this house is 360 degree cover. Also, houses provide a really big sight bonus. So you get 360 degree vision when you're inside a house. Um, that's only if there is nothing blocking your vision, however. So for instance, this little um, uh, hedge right here is blocking our line of sight behind here, which is just standard for any, you know, in any unit would be, their the vision would be blocked for it again over here because they can't see through um, objects and stuff like this. So what can get inside a garrison uh, house? Um, so that goes for machine guns, all types of infantry units except for mortars. Mortars can't get garrison houses. And the only type of anti-tank gun that can get inside a garrison house is a Raketenwerfer. Okay? So a Raketenwerfer and the machine gun teams um, all have a facing option, okay? So for instance, here's a machine gun, right? And it's currently facing out this left-hand side of this house right now. If I wanted to change it to shoot, say, enemies were coming around this side and wanted to, wanted to deal with these guys, I'd press A on my hotkey and then left click the side of the house I wish, wish the machine gun to face out of. So I'm going to do that. There you go, left click. And then it takes about four seconds to change um, from being on one side of the house to another side of the house, okay? Four to five seconds. However, a standard machine gun, if he sets it up and repacks, will take about seven seconds to change. So that's an also another uh, bonus that you'll get uh, for when changing in a house. So I just demonstrate this for you. Again, this ha this um, machine gun is going to face this side. So, one, two, three, four, five. Five seconds. Change machine gun position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there you go. So you get a, you save yourself about a couple seconds difference there uh, if you're inside a garrison house compared to if you're just out on the open. Okay. So what's the most effective way of clearing an enemy unit that's inside a building? Um, and that is through flamethrowers. So it, it, that would be the number one uh, choice of um, weaponry to get a, a unit out of a house. So a pioneer with a flamethrower, an engineer with a flamethrower would do the trick. Molotovs and cinder grenades would be very effective. Uh, and then if not, if you don't have that, uh, a sniper um, is very good against clearing like machine gun teams out of houses and also indirect fire with a mortar uh, as well if it's very difficult to get in close to a machine gun. Let's say this machine gun here in the house was supported by other infantry and you couldn't get close with a flamethrower. Um, you could probably deal with it with a mortar. You know, you could probably sit your mortar behind like this this um, this shrubbery here, the shop site blocker, uh, and then he could just safely just bombard this, this, this um, whatever infantry unit is in the house out of there and, and eventually kill it. Um, I also want to talk about, um, let's say you're in a building, right? And you wanted to exit a certain side of the house. There's two doors. There's this one over here, and there's this one over here. If you, I was to just tell the squad to unpack and press Q to get out, they will get out the default door, which would always be the door on this side, okay? If I wanted to tell the squad to get out of a specific door, you would press Tab, and then you would right click the side of the house the squad you'd like to get out, you know, the, the, the side of the house you'd like to get out of. So if I wanted to get out of this, so again, I've, hold, I've just pressed tab, and I'm going to right click this side. So now this, this um, MG is going to get out this side of the house, okay? And this is very important because if you uh, accidentally got out the wrong side of the house, which where the enemy was coming from, you that could be the difference between you 
losing a squad or keeping it alive. Okay, so that's incredibly important. Make sure you learn how to tab and right click beside the houses that you would like to get out of. It's also worth noting you need to, when you uh, when you uh, get inside a house, you need to make sure how many um, how many doors it has. Uh, for, for instance, this 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 wooden shack over here, this wooden little building, has only one door, which is very dangerous. I think all all buildings with only one door are incredibly dangerous. Why? Because that's the perfect place to lob a grenade. You can't avoid that. So if someone was to lob a, a grenade, if it was to land by the door entrance, the squad inside the house is going to get hit no matter what. They can't avoid that. If they stay in the house, they'll get hit. If they get out of the house, they're going to hit, get hit by the grenade. So if, that's why you probably should get out of the building a lot sooner inside in, when you're in a house with only one door compared to with houses with two doors. Because at least you can then, you know, if he tries to lob a grenade, you could jump out the opposite side of the building and dodge it with, in this house, for instance. Okay, if you lobbed it in from the from the front here, and again, if, if an enemy was over here and lobbed it, lobbed the grenade in this side, you could just jump out the, the, this side. But again, with this building, you cannot. Same thing goes with this house over here. This house over here again only has one door, so you got to bear that in mind. Also, for instance, a tank. If I if I rolled this tank up to the front of this, right, and the enemy was in that house, the, the unit would get would come out and immediately get crushed because my tank is right there. So this is another good little strategy you can do. So if you've got enemies in, in like a house with only one door, get the tank out right in the front of it. And if the squad comes out, they're just going to immediately get crushed by the, by the tank because it's blocking their exit. Okay. It's also worth noting. So um, we're going to talk about crushing buildings as well now. So this tank, if I move up close to this tank, you'll see that I'm doing damage to, to, to this building, right? And I did a considerable amount of damage. And to do even more damage to the house, you need to try and crush the side of the house which hasn't been damaged the most yet. So now we've done a lot of damage to this side, this, this one, um, the right hand side of this house, okay, this the south facing, okay? But if I wanted to crush this house completely, right, I would want to come over to over here and try and hit this corner, and or this corner of this, of this building, to, to, to make sure I get the crush off, okay? So again, I move the house, I move my vehicle in there, there you go, almost got it down there, and then again, probably if I even hit this little corner here, I'll probably... Be, Finish it off and crush it completely. So let's try and do that. There we go. And the building has completely been crushed, okay? There you go. So you can crush buildings with, uh, especially wooden buildings with tanks. Let's say you didn't have a tank. Let's say you um, you had only flamethrowers available or just a standard engineer with a flamethrower. If you wanted to make sure your opponent couldn't use this house, um, you know, and uh, no one's inside it. What you have to do is use attack move. So, for instance, here's my flamethrower half jack. I'm going to use, press the Q button, which is attack move on my keyboard, and then I'm going to select the house with left mouse click, and then the flamethrower of the half jack will now start to burn down the house. Now, as soon as the house starts smoking, it will then eventually be become destroyed. So now I can stop. So now that the house is smoking, it will now can continuously take damage until it's completely been destroyed. So just uh, if we just keep watching for a second, you'll see that it, it will just the health of the house will slowly start to um, decrease because it has now started smoking. Um, it'll take some time though. This is a big house, so there you go. It's now caught a light, and it's now starting to explode from the inside. So you can do this to all buildings, not just this one over here. And uh, same thing again, guys, with uh, with the flamethrower engineer. Let's attack, move it again. Press Q. So I recommend, guys, it's best to keep going with the flame damage until it's until you actually start seeing the physical the physical damage done being done to the building. There we go. There you go. Once it starts uh, um, exploding from the inside, that's when you know it will start to uh, eventually uh, collapse. Okay. Next, I want to go in, on about useless buildings. For instance, this building here on Faberville Approach, on the far north hand side of the map, is absolutely completely useless. Why? Because it doesn't see anything over to this left hand side because this bush is locked, is, is shut down. So um, you know, because you, you can't see any vision there, so you can't put a machine gun here to cover this side over here. There is no windows at all from this side, so enemy could just come up here and just kill the enemy squad inside it. And it's got a couple of windows here, but all this is seeing is like an inside of that. There's nothing, you know. There's nothing going on over here at all. So this building is considered absolutely useless. Okay. It's also worth noting, guys, that when you're when you um, are in a house, you need to make sure of the number of windows this house has. Okay. So for instance, this side of the house has five windows. This side has two, and this side has five as well. If I was to get in, in this building with, with my Strootman squad and try to hold this point, they wouldn't do a very good job. Why? Because only two guys from this side of the house would actually be able to defend this, um, you know, 
from enemy is enemies from attacking. So if you were to attack this super school, the best way about doing it is probably to come this way, maybe, and sit on this part of the house, uh, this sorry, this part of the wall here, and shoot long range at the squad here, or even just come up here with a flamethrower, and you'll be easy about to clear it. However, MGs, are, on the other hand, aren't such a big problem when it comes to the number of windows facing, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, number of windows on a house, because an MG only needs one to be able to be effective, okay? However, other squads need as many windows as possible. Um, so, for instance, if you were to put a just a standard squad in this building rather than a machine gun, it wouldn't be very effective. I also just want to quickly talk about raquettes as well, um, since we have two here. So this is a standard raquette, line of arc, a raquette inside a building. Boom, look at that difference. It's got a big firing arc difference. However, I wouldn't normally recommend putting raquettes in buildings because they are not camouflaged when they're inside a building. This one can be. Because he's outside, but this one is not. This one will be spotted by the enemy and it won't be seen. So people will know there's a raquette inside the house and then avoid it. But you do have the advantage that it can fire. Um, it's, it's arc of fire is greater than that of it being stand, you know, out on out in the open. Let's also quickly go on now to, um, let's say, you know, in the early game, we wanted to deny opponent from using a house. And we can do so, um, you know, as we just demonstrated with flames, but we also can do it with uh, just wire. So if I wanted to stop my opponent from using this side of the house, so I would first of all press Alt to turn my camera around, so I can easily get a good angle. Um, so Alt and then just turn my mouse around. And then I would press S, then W, and then build a piece of barbed wire right in front of the doorway. And now, that is denied my opponent from accessing this side of the house, okay? So the only way they could use this house is if they came around the side here and, used, and, and tried to access the house from this door. Unless they managed to get some sweepers to then cut the piece of wire. Uh, if they did that, then they could be, you know, they could then use the house or you know any any means by destroying the wire crushing it with, with a vehicle a light vehicle would be enough just like with the raquettes guys um the maxims also benefit from a greater line of uh, like greater arc range compared to um just being outside so there you go there's the difference there clicking on the one outside and then inside you can see they've got a bigger arc here's a 50 cal team inside inside and outside there you go and then vickers Inside, outside, Vickers pretty, pretty much the same, but I think the 50 cal has a slightly bigger arc. So guys, um, let's go on to the next uh, thing I would like to talk about, which is listening through the fog of war when, um, when in regards to garrisons. So this is only really can be said for right at the start of a game, but this is a, a good tip though nonetheless. Whenever someone garrisons a house, you will hear glass windows being broken. And you'll hear this through the fog of war. So that is a great indication of if your opponent has grabbed the house early before you even get the see, you know, vision via line of sight of one of your units. So if I was to get inside this house job, with this uh, infantry section, you will hear glass windows being broken because it's the first time they get into the house, okay? It's called a door. Listen. You go through it. Move. There you go. That very distinctive sound when windows are broken, okay? And this is any, any building, first time... Um, on, on a map, that the windows will be broken, okay? Okay, so let's get on to faction-specific, um, unique, uh, garrison houses, like, um, in regards to, uh, using a commander ability on them, which is, in this case for the British, it will be the forward observation post. So, I can't put the, this ability on this house until a unit is inside, and also, I believe, until I own the territory. So, I can't put it on this, um, I can't use this ability on this church yet, because I do not own the two territory points nearby. So if I control this one, selection, owner, uh, me. Now I should be able to. So now I own this point, we now I have access to it. Now, now I click on this ability and then I have the indication that I can do it because I have that four little uh, green arrows pointing in on each other. So now if I just click that. The building has been converted into a forward base, able to call in support for our troops. There we go. So this is a very unique um, type of garrison building and You'll now notice that it has four flags around it. This building now will also offer units to be, you can also reinforce around this building. So if I was to go and delete a squad member here, you can see that I now can reinforce around this building. This building on the Brits has also some other really cool features, um, which is as follows. So you can call in a high explosive artillery support round um, for 150 um, munitions. And you can see there's a circumference around it. So right now we have the fog of war off. So if I was to turn the fog of war on, I, w I wouldn't be able to do this ability if I didn't have line of sight. I can only drop this uh, these abilities when I have line of sight, okay? 
So if, let's say we had infantry forward, we could spot this. So I could drop artillery all the way around this circumference. And you can see it by this um, kind of red, orangey line, dotted line that's going around in, in a big ring around the thing. And also, look at the um, the, uh, the big yellow um, circle on the mini-map, which is an indication of where I can drop this, this these abilities. So I could drop smoke, I could drop this high explosive artillery run, I could do a recon run, I could do strafing run air support, and I could do artillery cover with this commander. Okay? Now, I would recommend putting this um, ability, if you were going to go for this commander, um, on a stone structure that has a lot of HP. In this instance, the church would be ideal because it has the most H. You know, church stone churches have the most HP out of, of really any building in in the game. And on this map specifically, this church is the is the strongest uh, building um, on the map. This one over here is pretty good. It's also you know you, when you're placing this ability, you want to try and get you know in a really good spot. So this house right here is a great spot because it dominates a good portion of the map. Like nearly probably 50% of the map is probably covered by this, um, by, by this, by having this building um, transformed into a forward observation post. I can hit this cutoff point with um, with with uh, with artillery and abilities, and same thing over here. I can hit this cutoff point as well, and this one over here. So this is like a perfect spot. Um, and so again, if you wanted to get rid of this, um, definitely um, use flamethrowers, uh, incendiary grenades, that kind of thing. Um, to try and get rid of this building. Um, like, really, the best thing, though, if you're like Okinawa, so right now we're up against Okinawa. So the best thing to get rid of this would probably be a Stuka, in my opinion, for Okinawa. So we would go for... Um, there we go, get the Stuka out. Now, Stukas are very effective against clearing units and buildings. However, because this is a church, it's probably not going to one-shot this building. But most buildings, it will one-shot in one go. We're just going to have a little look here, see how much damage we can do. So we got about three rounds onto this church, and um, yeah, we did about what 25% damage. So it's going to take quite a few rounds, so another, like three or four barrages maybe, to, to actually get rid of this house completely. Um, however, if I was if so if I was austere and I was going Austrup and, and I would have access to the railway, dropping railway on this would be great because railway would probably one shot this because it's four railways um, on one single spot will probably wipe the entire building. So, um, you know, using off map to try and clear a garrison house like this that has been transformed into Ford HQ would be advisable. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Soviet Ford HQ. So now we're playing as the Soviets. Same thing again here. This commander has a specific um, forward headquarters ability. So again, we can't put um, this ability on this house until a unit is inside the house. So we're going to get the unit inside. Engineers are now inside. Now we can put the ability on the house like so. Now the Soviet version of the forward headquarters also acts as a reinforcement point. So if I delete some squad members. I can now reinforce as, as indicated there. So we've just reinforced. Um, and it also carries each each time you do this ability, you have six medics on the on the on the structure as well and they will go around and heal um just like you normally would do back at the base so for instance these standard medics that you normally get you know for 250 manpower um they're literally exactly the same no difference between them and even if they die their, their models will um you know they, they will be replaced after a short uh, short amount of time and so the ability gives 250 manpower and 40 fuel so really that, you know, this is the same amount of costs back at the base, but all we're really doing is spending an extra 40 fuel to get this um, this upgrade, uh, which is very good. And you get three extra medics and, and uh, forward reinforcement, which is definitely worth it, in my opinion. Very, very good uh, handy ability for commander. Also, there's um, this ability here, rally defences. Nearby infantry will be inspired to defend the strong point, gaining increased effectiveness. So... <clears throat> infantry will be more... Uh, will fight more effectively and be harder to hit. So if you pop that ability on... You'll see this little um, icon above their head. That'll go on for a, a short while. And then it'll disappear. Um, so basically, if you're being attacked, good idea to pop that ability on. Just to keep, you know, just trying to hold the, this point. Okay? That's really the only only feature that it has. It doesn't act as a ret forward retreat point. And finally, I would like to go over um, being able to shoot over garrison houses with certain units. And also through them once they're destroyed. So KV-2, for instance, if you set up like, for instance, here. And you want to shoot over this house. Um... You could, you could do so as you know, just indicate it, so you'll see the shell fire over the house and land where you want it to. And then this kind of this is quite good because you're using this house as cover, so you know enemies can't be able to see you through this or attack you through this. Um, but you can lob your shell lots over. Same thing here with the brom bear. I'll try and attack here. Hope the round will go over the light, sh the small shed here. 
Same thing there. Though, if the house is quite big like this and I try and attack round, it won't work because the house is tall. Right? We'll let this keep firing though, because once the house is destroyed, just you, you'll, you, you'll see that it'll be able to um, keep you in over. I put an enemy, um, an enemy Stuck here. And again, we've got a T-34 here. The house is destroyed. We can use attack round to shoot through it, like so. Enemy can't see me because this is providing a, a you know, line of sight block. But we can just keep firing through here. Um, and you can do this all with all vehicles and stuff like that. So there you go. This house has been destroyed. Now we should be able to lob the shell over the house. Over it goes. There we go. So hopefully it gives you some ideas and some strategies you can do. You know, you can safely like hide behind buildings and, and get away with um, um, with lobbing shells over. Specifically with the bomb bear, the KB2. I'd imagine um, also maybe let's uh, get quickly get out the um, the Stuck E. I'd imagine this would be able to do exactly the same thing as well because it has the kind of same kind of round. So here we go, get the Stuggy. It used to have an old type of round, but now it should be. It now has the kind of the same kind of thing which it will fire over. So there you go, it fires over the over the, 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 the thing there, over the house wreckage there. Let's get an SU seventy six uh, gun as well. Um, Selection delete. Again, same thing over here. Let's try and get barrage over the house. Over the top it goes. And then, of course, the uh, Soviets SU-76 as well. You'll be able to do the exact same thing as well. You'll be able to lob the rounds over the house. Over he goes. So, yeah. However, this will have. I don't, this unit will have. Will not be able to attack round through. I don't think here. No, yeah, this won't be because this house is too um. There's too much terrain here, so it will not be very. It won't, won't be able to effectively shoot through this one. But smaller houses that are destroyed. There you go. One shot go got through, but most of them are not. But yeah, but this house here, you can see here. You know, the turret is pretty much pointing over the top of this wreckage, so it's going to be. You know, most of the shots will be able to connect through and finish off any you know, any armor or you know, not even just armor. You can hit any infantry that you might be able to do with the tack ground there. Just want to quickly add, guys, um, that you cannot repair um, the Soviet and the British forward HQ garrisons. You cannot do so. And also that a flamethrower engineer takes three flamethrower bursts to clear uh, a unit out of a house. Doesn't matter what unit it is, it takes three bursts to kill it. So hopefully that was all useful for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, as always, if you liked the, this video, this, uh, this, 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 this tip of the week video on your garrisons, Please give me a thumbs up, um, say something in chat, comment, and you know if you've got a suggestion for, for a video that you'd like to see a tip of the week um, that I haven't thought of yet, let me know because I'm, I'm, I'm running out of ideas actually. So give me, give me some ideas that I could do for tips of the week. Um, and if you want to support me, you can do so by subscribing to my Twitch account, which is twitch.tv slash helpinghands. I pretty much stream every day on there. Um, I have a Patreon account, which I have a link on my Twitch uh, there as well. Also follow me on Twitter and on, on, on those things, those uh, information will all be down below. Uh, if you want to keep track of whenever I'm doing you know, code, you know, new code videos and that kind of thing. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.